This fertile wooded valley is a land of giants. In it, one creature rules above all others, a highly evolved killer. For a million years, this top predator has lived unchallenged. It is Smilodon Fatalis, the saber tooth. But this formidable animal, with no predator to fear and plentiful game to eat, is about to disappear forever. Eleven thousand years later, a city of freeways and skyscrapers has arisen from the valley. Yet it has not totally obliterated all traces of the saber tooth. Evidence still remains beneath downtown Los Angeles. The Rancho La Brea tar pits is one of the world's most extraordinary fossil sites. These pools of tar contain a record of life stretching back into the Ice Age. Paleontologists have unearthed millions of fossilized bones. For Blair van Valkenburg, it's a gold mine. Believe it or not, this um, black swamp that I'm standing in the middle of is a paleontologist's dream. I mean, it is hard to believe looking at it, but it is chock-a-block with bone. I mean, from all the tar pits that are in this small area, um, there are over four million specimens that have been found, things as small as rodents and as large as mammoths. This paleontologist's dream is the result of an accident of ancient geology. Tar seeps from under the earth through cracks caused by California's frequent earthquakes. Pools of deadly oil form just below the surface. 10,000 years ago, you're a thirsty animal, and you might walk out, approach that water, and because you're a rather large and heavy animal, you'd find your feet sinking, and you would struggle, but that would actually probably drive you deeper as you struggle, and pretty soon you'd be in a position from which you were no longer able to get yourself out of. It would have been a slow, agonizing death. And even today, we see things getting stuck. It's not that this process stopped 10,000 years ago. It's still happening. You can see the tar coming up on the surface. And over here, you can see a little yellow rumped warbler that probably innocently saw some water or saw a bug on the surface and swooped down to get it and never took off again. Tar is one of nature's great preservatives. So even the smallest of bones remain. Paleontologists can reconstruct the past using the bones of the animals that they find, especially when they're beautifully preserved as they are at Rancho La Brea. You can reconstruct the strength of the animal, you can reconstruct the size of the animal, you can reconstruct its feeding habits from its teeth. The preservation at La Brea allows us to reconstruct the entire fauna with relative ease. But Rancho La Brea is famous for reconstructing one creature above all others the saber tooth. Over 2,000 of them have been recovered. Now we can probably guess that this might be a female. It's hard to tell because female and male saber tooths were about the same size. So we would need to really do a lot of detailed measurements to actually figure that out. And it really illustrates how well the tar preserves these fossils. There's just no distortion. The cat is very beautifully preserved and it's very easy for us to think about them moving around the landscape here, recreating, at least for a paleontologist, it's easy to recreate them in our own mind and see them roaming the plains of Los Angeles some 11,000 years ago. This female saber tooth is nine years old. She's very similar to a male cat up to a metre high at the shoulder and the weight of four men. She's tracking her prey, searching for the scent left by large game like bison or horses. The saber tooth is often thought of simply as a lion with big teeth, but it's a very different animal. 
she's twice as heavy as a modern lion, built more like a bear with stocky muscular shoulders, shortened hind legs and a stunted tail, all designed to deliver power to her killer canines. So why did the saber-tooth evolve its bizarre body and even stranger teeth? And is there a link between them and the animal's extinction? Obviously one of the most remarkable things about saber-toothed cats are these saber-like canine teeth that they have. And these are the longest canine teeth of any carnivore that ever existed, at least for the size of the cat. They're definitely the longest. And they're very sharp, actually, on the back edge. And they're narrow from side to side and knife-like in cross-section. Clearly, the teeth were vicious weapons, but little is understood about how the saber-tooth used them to kill. To find out means looking at the muscular structure of the entire body. But there's a problem. The tar pits preserve bone, not muscle. So one paleontologist has turned to modern cats to investigate this. The nearest match isn't a speedy runner like a cheetah, but the slower moving jaguar. This zoo animal died of natural causes. Now it's helping Virginia Naples to find out how its ancient saber-toothed relative actually behaved as a predator. The biggest mystery about saber-toothed cats is how an animal with very long and very sharp but very thin and brittle teeth could have been able to make a bite without these teeth being broken. And how were they able to use their muscles in order to generate enough force to make the bite. Understanding how the jaguar's biting muscles attach to the skull allows Virginia to compare the awesome power of the saber-tooth's bite. The saber-tooth cat skull, in addition to being larger than the jaguar skull, is different in shape and you've got much greater space here for this muscle than you do in this animal. So we can assume this muscle was bigger and therefore could exert more force than the corresponding muscle in the jaguar, which would help to give this animal a stronger bite. The skull also reveals the mouth could have opened some 30 degrees wider than the jaguar and other modern cats to administer the killing bite. The shape of the skull and the heavy body both show the creature had evolved to ambush lone animals. We've got an animal here with very heavy limbs, short legs, it would not have been a sprinter. It would have had to hide in ambush and sneak up on its prey. This animal was much bigger, relatively speaking much heavier, with even heavier muscles. If this animal could not run particularly fast, this animal would have been even more dependent upon hiding from its prey and then pouncing on it at the last minute. A lone bison has moved into the female's hunting ground in search of fresh grazing. Without the protection of a herd, it's exposed to a terrible risk. The female saber-tooth is hungry, and she has two new cubs to feed. Her massive bulk means she can eat around 30 kilograms of meat in one go. As a slow runner, good cover is vital to the success of her ambush. If she can pounce, she's capable of severing a bison's jugular and crushing its windpipe with a single bite. Yet even for a predator as deadly as the saber-tooth, ambush hunting is a high-risk strategy. She's paid a price for her kill, injuring her back while wrestling the two-ton bison to the ground. Proof that hunting could take a heavy toll on saber-tooths comes from the bones found at La Brea. Paleopathologist Chris Shaw finds hundreds of similar injuries on saber-tooth bones many of which he thinks were caused by bringing down large prey. 
Being a large, vicious carnivore is an awfully risky business, no matter where you are in the world. We have this very nice example of a pelvis of a saber-toothed cat. This side is normally developed, looks and shape is very normal. On the other side, however, we have a very traumatic injury. What happened here was that the thigh bone itself had dislocated from the joint and there was complete destruction of cartilage which affected uh, this area by bacteria getting in here and causing a massive infection. Over 5,000 mangled saber-tooth bones have been found at La Brea. For Chris, they are not only evidence of the high-risk hunting strategy saber-tooths pursued, but how group behavior may have evolved to help injured animals. The incredible thing is that these crippling injuries did not kill these animals. What killed these animals was the La Brea Tar Pits getting entrapped in the La Brea Tar Pits. To me, these injuries indicate that these animals were social animals. And being part of a social group, 